Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at the conservation of energy, one of the really, really important parts of your Edexcel physics. The different types of energy can be remembered by using Geek's Lunch. I would admit the U doesn't stand for anything. Gravitational potential energy. Electrical energy. Elastic potential energy. Kinetic energy. Sound energy. Light energy. Nuclear energy. Chemical energy, as in batteries or food or in heat or thermal energy. You'll notice most of these involve more than one type of energy. For example, in the phone, we have electrical energy going in, but we have chemical energy being stored, and then heat energy, because your phone gets hot, light and sound energy coming out. With the match, we have chemical energy being stored and then kinetic energy being used to strike the match and then heat, light and a bit of sound energy coming out. With the fireworks, it was stored as chemical energy and then we are going to have it transferred into kinetic energy as it moves up. As it explodes, we're going to have light, uh, heat and sound energy coming out and then gravitational potential energy as it starts to fall, kinetic energy as it falls back down. The law of conservation of energy tells us that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It is only transformed into another type of energy. Which is really cool because it tells us that the energy you're going to have for lunch or breakfast today has been around since the start of the universe. That the energy that's powering um, your computer, your phone, your lights has been around since the start of the universe. And the energy that you are using, the kinetic energy, the chemical energy that you are using today to get out of bed, to do your daily things, is going to be around till the end of the universe. If we want to work out the change in gravitational potential energy, that is equal to mass times gravity times the change in height. Gravitational potential energy is measured in joules, mass is measured in in kilograms, gravity is 10 newtons per kilogram and height is measured in meters. To work out kinetic energy, that is half times mass times velocity squared. With kinetic energy being measured in joules, half is just a number so we don't need units for that. Mass is measured in kilograms and velocity is measured in meters per second and it's important to note for this one that the here it is just the velocity squared not the whole thing. While energy cannot be created or destroyed it can be wasted. Wasted energy is any energy that comes out of a situation that we didn't intend for it to be there. For example, in a light bulb, we have electrical energy going in. This is converted into light, heat and sound. The light is the useful energy, whereas the heat and the sound are not useful energy. They are wasted energy. And a worthy example would love to describe this. If we can say that the wasted energy dissipates into the surroundings. It spreads out so much it can't be collected and used. It's not gone, it's still there, it's just spread out, it's dissipated. When we want to visually show the efficiency of something, we can use a Sankey diagram. So on this side we have the energy going in, in this direction is the useful energy, in this direction is the wasted energy. So in our example here of a blender, the energy going in is going to be electrical energy. The useful energy coming out is going to be kinetic energy and the wasted energy coming out is going to be sound energy. Now the reason I've switched to graph paper for this is because we can put numbers on it. We have 20 squares going up that way and that could be 20 joules. 15 squares going this way and that could be 15 joules and five squares going that way, and that could represent five joules. The units might change for this, but what the key thing is, you need to count the number of squares, assuming it's on graph paper, or if they ask you to sketch it, make sure it is roughly in proportion. 
heat comes off and we can detect that with an infrared camera. We can see how well the house is insulated. The blue parts, the roof, are very, very cold, so not much heat is escaping. Whereas the walls here and here are very, very hot, so lots of heat is escaping. We can see that the roof is blue and the windows are blue, suggesting they're very good insulation. New houses are built to be very energy efficient and old houses can be adapted to be very energy efficient. So we can have cavity wall insulation. Double glazing. Loft insulation. Carpets, curtains, draft excluders, if they still have them they could have a jacket around the hot water tank. Efficiency is equal to useful power out over total power in. And this can be a percentage or a decimal. Efficiency is equal to useful energy out over total energy in and this can be um, expressed as a percentage or a decimal. When we think about generating electricity we can either do that with a renewable source or with a finite source. A renewable source is one that isn't going to run out and we can get more of it, whereas a finite source is going to run out. Renewable sources include things like the sun, the wind, water including tidal power, hydroelectric power, wave power, geothermal power. Whereas a finite resource is going to be a fossil fuel, so coal, oil, gas or nuclear power. The advantage of solar power, the advantage of the majority of renewable resources is that they don't release carbon dioxide. We're never going to run out of them and they're generally non-polluting. The disadvantage of solar is that it doesn't happen um, during night and isn't very good on cloudy days or wintry days. It can also be expensive to install. Wind turbines, a disadvantage of wind turbines is that some people don't like them. They also don't work very well on uh, non-windy days. Tidal and wave power can be disruptive to the local environment, whereas a hydroelectric dam involves um, flooding a large area, which may include people's homes or animals' habitats. And the disadvantage of geothermal power is that it can only be used in volcanic countries. The advantage of using fossil fuels or nuclear power is that they are very, very readily available. It's a very, very cheap source of electricity, and things like coal power stations have a very short start-up time. The disadvantage of using coal, oil and gas is that they take millions and millions of years to create, so we are about to run out of them. They are very, very heavily polluting, so they release large amounts of carbon dioxide and other pollutants into the atmosphere, which contribute to climate change. The disadvantage of nuclear power is that you have to store the nuclear radioactive waste for long periods of time, and there is a very small, but there is a potential risk of explosion.